Hi everyone! I don't know where to start today in my video but there is a huge mess on my desk and I am super super tired after doing all of the um, shipping of the orders um, that I had the, the sales that I had on my Etsy I then instead of taking a break which I desperately needed started filming three very extensive gift guides thank you so much for leaving lovely comments uh, that you enjoyed those gift guides and uh, yeah so now we're literally on a verge of Christmas and I did want to have like a day of rest before Christmas <laughs> and um, it's kind of looking a bit tight now so what I want to do today is just kind of like a semi catch-up video because I know I have missed um, filming the catch-up videos in the last couple of months it's just been too crazy busy here but yeah I'm not going to go in the front camera because I look a mess <laughs> I had no time for makeup today um, I've got my hot tea I've got um, a variety of things here to talk to you about and that's basically what it's going to be about a bit of everything really um, so I am also pre-recording a couple of videos I'm going to go down to two videos per week so it will be Monday and Friday so I'm taking out the Wednesday video and uh, purely because I just want to have rest and I need it so yes I'm just going to um, do it that way okay so let's start off with this crochet hat which i have done for my son he is currently loving everything rainbow and for his birthday he requested a rainbow cake and um so there are a couple of other rainbow things that he really enjoyed so i decided to make him a rainbow hat which is really easy you just need to find cotton yarn in different colors and I got these ones if you're interested in that uh, tiger shop so I popped in that shop a couple of weeks ago and they basically had um, these sets of five um, in the this color range like the green blue uh, and then they had the yellow orange and pink so I got the two sets um, so it basically made ten that I asked him how many pompons he wanted like one or two he said many so he wanted as many as possible and then I stuck three in here and I think I used up all the colors yeah I did um, the only thing that was left was tiny little bit of this pale orange but I have used everything else um, out of those tans so it's actually perfect so if you are in the shop and wondering how many you need so for a child's hat he's four now um, you'll need two of those and then obviously if you have a smaller child you can uh, keep a couple and use however you want or you want for an bigger or older child or an adult then you need to scale it up a bit more so yeah so that's what we did I made the pom-poms with my pom-pom makers oh here we go that's all that I had left out of the ten uh, yarn balls so I used this one which is I think like a medium sized um, so let's see it says somewhere here yeah so this is seven centimeters in, in diameter um, to make these pompons and to be honest with you I didn't even trim them I can see a couple of uh, bits and pieces need to be trimmed but I kind of like them to be not perfect I wanted them to be a little bit more shabby kind of you know so um so that's it and it was so much fun so if you watched the previous videos then you'll know that what I did was um I put these so I've taken the yarns individually out and I put them separately in some of the um, advent calendar stockings that we have hanging and so on some days he will pull out uh, he would pull out a different color and we collected them in this bowl and then at the end it was like a nice full ball of cotton yarn and yeah it was so much fun then I just sat down a couple of evenings and made this hat I think in two evenings and uh, then finished the 
pompons yesterday so we wore this hat already and he got so much attention he loved it everyone loved his hat so um, that's a nice project to do with your little ones over this time of the year I love crocheting and um, I just don't have time throughout the year but when it comes to Christmas I just make myself sit down and really uh, enjoy that fun time of creating something Okay, I had to switch on the studio lights because it's dreadful outside, it's raining, it's only actually, it's not even 2 o'clock now in the afternoon, but it is super, super dark, it's like usually it would be around 3 or 4. So anyways, speaking of cotton yarn, um, I keep calling it cotton yarn, I don't even know if it's cotton yarn, it's, it's yarn for sure, but whether it's cotton or not, no, so this one is acrylic, polyacrylic? Yeah, 100% acrylic. The other one, oh, this one is cotton yarn. Yes, yeah, so this one was cotton yarn. This one is not. Uh, so it's a different thread. It's a bit more woolly and thicker. And so this would make a lovely little scarf because it's super soft. So it'd be nice around the neck or another woolly pom-pom hat so I haven't decided yet but I think I might create something nice or otherwise what you can do for your kids as well uh, if they have like teddy bears or favorite toys or dolls or anything like that you can crochet little things you can make little hats you can make you can make little jumpers and uh, that way they can like dress them up and play uh, with them as well so that's another good idea of first of all enjoying a little bit of crocheting time to yourself I'm not really a knitter I tried knitting a few times but it, to me it doesn't make sense in my head because it's sort of you have to calculate a certain way and it's sort of you know it has to be like a square or you have to know how to kind of make it smaller I don't know but with crocheting it just feels so natural for me uh, I just know where to take out the uh, hoops or whatever they're called and where to add them and how to make it kind of um, more organic so I'm definitely a crochet person not a knitter but you of course could knit something as well right next thing what shall we talk about so where we live we live in the countryside and there's a small town near us and um, there's a nice uh, like a uh, chocolate or confectionery um, shop with little sweets and stuff I never sort of buy that uh, for Mason but we go upstairs and upstairs there is like a stationery section and they have loads of different stickers so uh, I give Mason sometimes um, two pounds and then he can pick uh, two different sets of stickers and while he's doing that I also noticed that they have some other neat stuff and this time I could not walk past this beautiful um, uh, cord which is it says here 25 meters and it's a neon pink like a super hot fluorescent pink uh, thread that I could use uh, to attach to tags uh, for like sort of memory keeping all sorts of things it's just too beautiful to walk past so I got a little um, um, roll of that and then they also had these so uh, we had like um, a stationery shop which was it, uh, it had loads of things in there, but the service was rubbish and so it closed down because I guess people didn't want to go in there. Um, yes, yeah, so they, the, the, this is where I used to buy the little um, rings, uh, the binding rings, but as they closed down, I didn't know kind of where to buy them other than online. So I was happy to see that this little shop has it as well. So I got... I think they do them in different sizes. I got this size, which is great to um, make a little album. So it has four hoops. You could use two or you could um, use like four. So imagine like this and two down there and just make holes in the paper. You don't need to do any binding if you don't have like a book binding tool. These are very easy to use and you just kind of lock them like that when you need to open the page and close it and add different pages so you can add pages at any point um, 
of, of the process. So I've done uh, an order on um, Jackson's and uh, so basically if you remember I showed you this oblique um, calligraphy dip pen holder now the it's a nice one but this thing slides out relatively easy um, which is not a problem actually someone asked me if you could use it for left hand people so because this slides out I mean I'm not a left hand person so I wouldn't be so let's see so if you are holding it like that and the nip goes there as a left hand person if I would do something like this so swap it to the other side would that be would that be for left handlers do you reckon I mean if you're left hand person do you have to hold the nib I assume that way right you wouldn't write it pointing this way it makes no sense so I guess you yeah so I would assume because you can move it and swap it you probably can use this oblique pen for a left handed person so I hope that answers your question um, so then um, I mean this was fine however what I encountered the, the problem that I encountered with it is that it would not fit all of the nibs so some of the nibs are smaller some of the nibs are bigger so this one um, doesn't sit very well so every nib or um, yeah so the dip nib um, has a different size of this little scoop here I'm not sure what the technical name is but um, some of them are wider some of them are a bit narrower so you can see that it's really uh, moves really easily and if you would dip it into a ink bottle this is very likely to just drop in there and make huge mess or even worse mess up your uh, calligraphy when it would just fall out onto the paper and smudge things so that's why I mean there are a couple of uh, nibs that work perfectly with it so I would just use it for those nibs because I like the actual look and design of the uh, holder of the oblique holder but I had to then go and to buy a separate one which is adjustable now um, those so this one I ordered from Amazon and then I couldn't find anything that I could get relatively quickly um, on Amazon. They were all kind of, they would have been shipped to, shipped from far abroad. So I decided to check out Jackson's and this is what I found. So this little Joseph Gillot or Gillot um, calligraphy. So it's called copper plate dip pens and you have four nibs included and it says it's made in UK I mean the um, the look of this pan if I could just say it in one word it would be horrendous it's just uh, wood which is not really properly polished is chopped off at one end chopped off at the other end um, it's it's really sort of done in a very haphazard way where it does the job brilliantly don't get me wrong however the the design part of it is is just sad really um, <clears throat> so in case you were looking at this sad and you wanted to know I'm just going to let you know that that's what you get the nibs in so a paper little box which is quite sad as well um, so I would invest in some sort of plastic or like a metal little um, tin like this where you could hold all of your nibs in a bit more of a uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, way but these are the nibs and uh, one of them like this one is so soft and so super fine um, I mean they're right but the point is now I can use any nib I want because if I show you these two nibs you can see 
they're different so this one is wider than that one or even this one is even smaller so what you do is um, someone showed a really good trick so you can use the back of the nib or I prefer to use my flat tweezers and I just kind of take slide one of the feet into the little screw you unscrew it just a little bit you don't need to unscrew it fully just a tiny little bit so that this gap becomes bigger and can you see in this uh, horrific design <laughs> it's like handmade but not even looking great so yeah between here basically where I'm going to insert my tweezers is where you're going to put the nib so once you let's take the smallest one once you put this nib in and you adjust it to the right size then you can go back and screw it back in don't need to over screw it it holds it really nicely and that way it's not going anywhere it's really sitting there neatly so it, like I said, it does the job, but it doesn't feel great in my hand. I don't like looking at it, but it does do the job. So it is up to you whether you can find somewhere else and wait to get it delivered from Amazon. But yeah, so this one, you can see it can go through all the way. There's nothing holding it and it falls out really easily. Okay, so that's that. Then also, along with uh, this oblique adjustable dip pen holder, I also decided to get a few um, nibs. Uh, so this is also from Jackson's. And um, so I ordered one of the hunters just to have a, um, a spare one. I ordered this one, which is the Leonard number 41, it says here. It's a, yeah, Leonard 41. So this one is quite beautiful to just look at. It has uh, a bit here which looks like a little crown and it writes quite nicely. Then this one I really like as well, which is um, also Leonard. It's a 33, so it's an elongated thin nib. And then the third one I got is this one here, which is called, it's also by Leonard and it's a 40. And now it's a very um, interesting nib. It's very wide. And then there are these cutout parts, which I'm not sure what they do because uh, I'm not sure whether they would hold the ink because there's so many cutouts here and what the purpose of them is. Um, but yeah, so I will give it a go. So I tried a couple of them here. I don't remember which one was which. Um, yeah, but basically that's what I did here. This little um, quote I did from that book. This one here, Secrets of Modern Calligraphy by Kirsten Berg. And so I've been trying to kind of um, write beautiful quotes. I also have been um, exercising with my uh, letters. I don't like my M, so I was kind of trying to change the M. Yeah, so um, these these are fun. I will do more of a um, kind of in-depth video maybe at some point for you. Okay, so let's finish talking about the MD notebook. Now, um, so this is the MD cotton notebook, which I have been absolutely loving and I'm sort of slowly coming to the end of it so that's all that I have left here 
and um, I didn't want to run out of it because I know some of you have messaged me and said that it's sold out on Amazon, US Amazon, UK Amazon. So yeah, I basically um, went ahead and I ordered another one thinking that that's the same one. But one of my subscribers let me know that it's not the same and it's not a cotton book and you would know it by the yellow thread. So if it's the yellow thread, the paper is slightly more off-white and it's not cotton. However, the one that is whiter paper, so let's do it side by side comparison. So there you go. So the whiter paper is the cotton paper and it also has the wide thread. Now, I was thinking to myself, goodness, what am I going to do with this one now and how different is it going to be? I haven't had a chance to try watercolor yet, which I might do just now. Uh, however, like I just showed you, I have did the um, uh, inking or the, the brush lettering here and the ink uh, writes really beautifully on it. It dries nicely. It uh, glides nicely on the paper. It is slightly more off-white, which I prefer whiter paper, but it's not bad. It's It seems like a good quality. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try some watercolors here on the camera with you just to see how it does. Right, so let's try, I don't know, let's try some yellow and some pink, see how they work. I mean, you still can use watercolor in it not much um, the kind of the paper sort of uh, absorbs it a little bit more maybe is what I want to say because I feel on the other paper it sort of has time to let's see yeah so you can see here it gets very very crinkly very quickly Let me do my color and then see how that compares. Where's the one that's started? So this one. So I'm going to do that peach one. By the way, thank you so much for buying the um, the watercolors and all of my stamps. The floral stamp has stamp set, sorry I'm doing this off camera, has been now sold out. So someone snatched up the last one. Congratulations to you. Um, yeah, and um, I'm so happy you have been enjoying them and having loads of fun. I will be designing new stamp sets in the new year. And so hopefully we'll continue having fun so it kind of I feel that with this paper it didn't go to such an extent of buckling here it sort of would stay flat and you could work with the watercolors here not so much but let me just dry it and come back <laughs> 